what's up y'all welcome back to my channel be nicole inspiring souls so i have somewhat of a different setup and The one thing that I could do is come on today and share some of my insecurities because a lot of people who know me, some people who don't know me, like would think that I have a lot of confidence in a lot of areas and I think I do for the most part, but there's also a lot of things that I really, I have to, I have grown to love about myself or let me not say love. I have grown to embrace those things about myself over the years. So yeah, I'm just going to share a few of my insecurities in hopes that it will allow you to see that one, no one is perfect. And two, we all have things that we want to change or grow. So yeah, you're not the, you're not the only one for sure. As y'all can tell, I have another sweatshirt on from Walmart and this one y'all says, I don't know if you can tell. But it says, you make me smile. Isn't that cute? It says, you make me smile. Isn't that cute? It's a cute. <laughs> Insecurities. Okay, let's go. Where do you want to start? Insecurities. Okay. So I used to be, I'll share some things that I used to be insecure about, and I'll share some things that I'm still insecure about. So I used to be insecure about my hair in its natural state. And I think that's because, I don't know. I I just used to love seeing my hair straight. I think I also was able to manage my hair when it was straight, if that even makes sense. But let me just say, I have honestly grown to love my hair in its natural state. And I've found my products that I that work for me that I love. I honestly, I, I can't wait to get braids, I'll be honest. <laughs> it just takes so much time. But yeah, I don't even have a desire to like straighten my hair now. So I typically try to straighten it once or twice a year just to just to check, like do a length check. But yeah, my hair, honestly, it's probably in the healthiest state that it's been, has been in my entire life. I'll be honest with you. Another thing that I'm insecure about is my gap. So it's very small. And a lot of times in pictures, because it, it like my teeth push up. So you honestly, in pictures, some people can't tell that I even have the gap because my dot on teeth push up in. I'll try to get closer. Uh, but yeah, it's a small, small, small gap. And y'all growing up, oh my God, I used to beg, beg, beg beg my mom to please get me some braces so that we could close the gap. My mom has straight teeth, my sister has straight teeth, and yeah, my grandmother though has a gap and her sister has a gap. So apparently it does run in the family. So that's one thing that sometimes I still have to like, like coach myself through. It's not something that I'm like ashamed of because if you know me, you see me smiling and laughing all the time. But I'm not gonna lie, I almost purchased the the little kit. Um, I don't even know what you call it, but the little I think Smile Smile Direct Club or something like that. I almost purchased the kit, y'all, to close to close the gap, but mm, got distracted and didn't. But yeah, I don't have any like issues with my teeth. So I try to count my blessings and just be grateful. And it's not a, a large gap, but it is something that I notice and something that I in the moment can somewhat be self-conscious about. So 
my ears, they're a little small, but I do have good, I do have good hearing. So I have small ears, but a big head. And yeah, I guess like, I don't know. They're just, yeah. The thing about my ears being so small, I will say is that it makes it really hard for me to wear the like dangling earrings. And actually, another thing that I am insecure about right now is that I think it's this ear. Yep, it is. So this ear, the hole rips, my first hole. So the funniest part is when people are talking directly to me, they get distracted by my ear being ripped there and they start staring here. And I know exactly what they're looking at. So yeah, it's been like that since, I wanna say like 2009, 2010. It actually, that doesn't bother me at all. I went and got my um, ears pierced again and I can wear earrings of any sort i just have to be careful sometimes with how long i wear them because my ears well one they're small um but two my ears um since are very like sensitive so after about i would say the six hour mark we're kind of pushing it i've touched my eyebrows up but my eyebrows y'all they are so bushy like they they have to be tamed on the regular so this quarantine life is this is the only thing that i just want to get done i'm not concerned about my nails but yeah this this here ugh, ugh, like that will be the first stop that i make when every when stuff starts open back up and even then i'm gonna wait but yeah that'll be the first stop that i make because you have to like i mean they look decent now but we'll try i used to be let me say really insecure about my lips being so big and then i think i just started to embrace it and now that's not an insecure uh thing i i and let me just say i didn't i should have started this video i love me i'm just trying to show that like no one's perfect and even though people look a certain way on social media and may seem really confident uh just know that there's something that they're insecure about and the beauty is that you can work through your insecurities and grow to love it. i was born with eczema and I used to have eczema from head to toe. Like it was, y'all, it was so bad. I do not have eczema now. I honestly just, I just think the Lord healed me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I do not have eczema. I don't have any issues. I can wear what I wanna wear. I can even wear, you know, perfumes and lotion and and use creams with the scent and it not agitate my skin but growing up that was not the case so growing up the only thing that i could use was like dove and like aveeno and i used to feel like i smell like oatmeal all the time whatever that smells like but so i like i said do not have eczema now but i do still have the scarring so you can still see parts of like my body of where I used to have eczema. So I do sometimes get insecure about that. Um, it's actually like on the very top of my feet, you can actually see the scarring there. It's actually on uh, my, the lower part of my legs, both, both legs there. And there is a large scar on my stomach, right around my belly button. So there, I used to be allergic to the nickel in your pants. So my mom and I, we used to have to put uh, medical tape on the back of my pants. This is after we realized I was having an allergic reaction to the nickel. But yeah, if I didn't use that, it would break me out all the time. So my stomach does still have the scarring. But again, I counted a blessing because I do not have issues now, but 
yeah eczema used to literally take over what felt like my entire being because i was always having to watch what i would eat what i could use what I allowed myself to be exposed to, just, ugh, I hated it. And I'm very grateful that I do not have issues with eczema now. The thing that I am really, y'all, I am so insecure about would be the size of, the size of my thighs. So I've always been somewhat insecure about my thighs. And it's crazy because looking back, I'm like, eh, they were big but they weren't that big y'all you know, my thighs if i gain weight the weight goes there there only it doesn't seem to make its way anywhere else so i used to like well kind of even now like i don't really like to wear shorts or even like mini skirts like nothing Nothing that's going to expose my thighs. And even when I wear like leggings or tights, I like to have an oversized shirt on with it. And I mean, I love me. I'm not, I do. I love me. I love my body. But yeah, my thighs, they just sometimes make me very somewhat insecure. And so I have spent, I would say, a lot of time, but I have just try to adjust and basically purchase clothes that I feel good in but also look good in. So I kind of stray away from things that are tight or too short just because yeah yeah these thighs. Uh let's see what else am I insecure about? Oh I used to be very insecure y'all about the way that I sound People used to always tell me that I talked white and I don't know why, but that bothered me so. So I spent a lot of years trying to like adjust my voice and the way that I sound and the way that it comes out. But I love that YouTube and just being a coal inspiring souls is somewhat, it keeps pushing me to uh, use my voice for good so yeah and and interesting enough a lady last week told me that I had the voice for a podcast I don't know if I have the time to dedicate to another platform but I don't know that just made my day I've always I used to say that one day I would like if I could go back to school I would go and major in like media communications and I would want to be a radio host y'all and my name would be Nicole so I'd be like what's up y'all welcome back to 95.7 Jams it's your girl B Nicole and we are whatever yeah so I yeah that's what I would do if I could go back but anyway I have I think grown to love my voice and how, yeah, just how I sound, how I'm able to communicate. And I think I'm even like now very grateful because in my role now, I have to do a lot more like presentations and speaking engagements. And so it just works. It, it helps me to be confident. I also used to be very shy. That's sometimes really shocking to people, but I used to be super, super, super shy, y'all. Super shy. Like, just wanted to stay in the back. Didn't care to ever be anywhere near the, the front. I didn't want to be seen or heard. I just wanted to come, serve, and go home. Uh, I used to not like speaking in front of large crowds or even having to just stand up in front of large crowds and it's crazy because I used to be a performer I was a major in band and but in my mind that's so different because when you're performing you're not having to really make eye contact with your audience the one thing I would make eye contact with would be the sky like I'm looking up and I'm performing and I'm doing all my hand motions and I wasn't having to really look at people directly so 
but yeah I was shy and I feel like I started coming out I was probably coming out of my show more so in high school but even then looking back I was still shy I got to college my freshman year and homegirl was super duper shy and I don't college just provided you with so much exposure and freedom all wrapped up into like this one ball and I was like I don't know what to do with it right I don't know if I should really like get out there and live it up or if I should just play it safe and just go to class and go home. Uh, <laughs> so I was really shy. It wasn't until I became a member of a sorority to where I found my voice. And basically being a part of the organization, it like pushed me into a room with so many intelligent women who were very vocal and very opinionated and it was like if you don't you know speak up like they're gonna like they're gonna talk over you they're gonna get their point across and you're just gonna be stuck because you chose to not so it was placing me in those settings in that atmosphere that allowed me to find my voice but then also learn how to use my voice effectively another thing that I insecure about let's see oh i used to be real real insecure y'all about my story like my testimony you know being born in a single parent household and you know not having mom and dad in the picture and just some of the struggles that i have had what people saw or what people you know would think in the end but i knew that my story had so much purpose wrapped up in it and that's what encouraged me to start sharing my story so that I could inspire others to live out their truth and to embrace their flaws and just you know embrace their struggles and to celebrate their their wins, celebrate their journey, celebrate their accomplishments. Um, and so that's, you know, why Be Nicole Inspired Souls was even created to begin with. It was because I knew there were other people who were going through life and feeling like you're up against, like, feeling so defeated and and feeling as if though like every time you make a little progress there's something that presents itself after the fact that knocks you back and pushes you um you feel like to a place that you've already graduated from and how do you stay motivated and encouraged to get back on track and to keep going and to do so with perseverance and so that's what i I want to get back to that. I want to get back to sharing the little snippets to inspire others. It's so much easier now to just like share something that inspires me than actually having to figure out which part of my life do I want to share today? Because y'all, every single day, like there's a little, I get a little, what I call God winks. And these are just reminders that God is faithful, that like God hasn't forgotten about me. And so that's what I used to share. I used to share those. And what I've learned is that there are things that, you know, God reveals to me or God uh, shares with me that it's just for me in that moment. And I can't share because I don't, I don't have the words. I'm I'm still processing it. I'm still speechless. I'm still trying to figure out why me. But once I am able to answer all of those questions, then I do openly share uh, with all of you. So yeah, those are just some things that I have been insecure about. And the one thing I would say too in 
you know, with your insecurities is that you have to create opportunities for you to embrace them. Um, and that allows you to grow to love you, like the real you, which a lot of people don't get to see. My family gets to see the real me. My, I feel like my friends get to see the real me as well. I would say it's funny because most, like most of the guys that I've dated in the past, I think thought I was one thing. I always started dating and I was like, it all makes sense. <laughs> it makes complete sense. Like I'm just so unique in the way that I think about things and the way that I approach things and the way that I pursue things, but also the way that I respond to things. So I know that I'm unique. I have learned to embrace my uniqueness and my uh, weird little quirks and the things that I love and that make me me. And I think the beauty in all of that is that I'm able to share my journey of growth and self-love with all of you. Today I went and bought some home office decorations and the sign that I bought which just spoke to me was grow where you are planted. The one thing that I want to leave you with is that if you plant nothing, nothing blooms. So you're going to look back, you know, three months from now, six months from now, and, you know, be frustrated with the fact that you've made no progress. But if you really dig deep, you also didn't put in the work to see um, any progress or to see any. I would say choose to plant something. So whether that be planning positivity, planning your business, planning a family, whatever you know you desire to plant, um, choose to plant, and then make sure that you uh, plant it with love. Then also that you're preparing yourself for when it comes to fruition. So, that's all that I have for you all today. Remember that we are all having to make adjustments to our schedule and our life and that it's important for you to extend yourself some grace because I don't think anyone has it easy. I think some people have it easier than others, but I don't think any of us really have it made because this has required all of us to think outside of the box and create new ways and new spaces for us to operate and that within itself is a challenge stay encouraged and be inspired today